Hi, I'm Kenny Johnson, R&D engineer for Keysight Technologies. I want to take a couple minutes today to tell you about a new probe that I just worked on, the N7028 Power Rail Probe. Now, this probe is very useful for making power integrity measurements. When we say power integrity, what we mean is the measurement or the study of the conversion and delivery of power within a system. Now, the type of measurements that users make when they're making power integrity measurements include supply drift, supply compression, PARD, which is commonly known as periodic and random disturbances, uh, static and dynamic load response. People also want to look at their how their product behaves over temperature. And then finally, high frequency transients and noise on their supplies that can cause clock and data jitter in their system. So when users approached us asking for a tool that could help them do these kind of things, what they said they needed is four things in a probe. They wanted low noise, because you don't want the noise of your measurement system to overshadow the noise that you're trying to trace down. Second, they told us that what they wanted was support for the popular supply rails that they're going to encounter on a daily basis within their systems. Third, they said they want low loading. They want a system that when they hook it up to their, they want a measurement system that when they hook it up to their system, it doesn't distort their system or make it misbehave. And then finally, they want high bandwidth. The troubling part for many users is chasing down these high frequency noise and transients that can cause clock and data jitter. Many, many folks have told us that's the single biggest cause of clock and data jitter in their system is the high bandwidth transients and noise. So let's take a couple minutes now and I'll show you how the probe works. So we talked about that one of the features that users were looking for in a measurement solution for power integrity was low noise. Now one of the things I want to share with you is a common pitfall that many of our users fall into, and that is that they choose to use the 1 mega ohm input to their scope rather than the 50 ohm input. When you're choosing a probe to hook up to your scope or even just cabling straight into your scope, you're going to get the lowest noise with the scope typically from the 50 ohm input. I want to demonstrate that to you here real quick. What I've done is I've got the scope just in maximum sensitivity on 50 ohms. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change it to 1 mega ohm and you'll be able to see the trace get fatter and you'll also be able to see the measurements jump up. Now, that's what happens when you're, when you're using the 1 mega ohm path. Many times users think the 1 mega ohm path is the right choice because it, its specifications are more utilitarian and they t think that that lends itself better to power rail measurements. You're going to be hooking up to high voltages, you're better off doing that. What we want to tell you today is that there's better ways to do it, and it's probes and accessories that hook up to the 50 ohm input to the scope so that you can get the benefits of the much lower noise floor of the 50 ohm channel. Recall that the second thing that users said that was important to them was the ability to have support for the voltage rails that they're going to encounter on a daily basis. That, that could be things from 0 all the way up to 24 volts has been very popular with users that we've talked to. Now why that's important to them is that what they're trying to do is look at the very small AC signals riding on top of their DC supplies. Believe it or not, what you see back there on that scope is a 1.8 volt DDR memory. Now what I've done is I've double probed the system, same probe point with two different inputs to the scope. One is going directly into the 50 ohm path, which we said is the low noise path, so of course we want to do that. The other, I'm probing it with the N7028 power rail probe, and I'm making use of probe offset. So with probe offset, we can subtract out the DC content of the signal and zoom in. Most scopes, their native 50 ohm path doesn't have enough offset range to cover all the supplies that people want to see. So if you look at these signals, you can see on channel 2 there, the green trace, We've zoomed in on it as much as we possibly can on that 50 ohm channel. You can see some, some wiggles in the, the remnants of the switching of the, of the power supply. On channel 1 though, there's clearly a lot more detail in the waveform itself, but if you look closely at the measurements at the bottom there, you'll see that the peak-to-peak -peak voltage for the zoomed in channel, that's the probe with offset with the N7028, we're, we're seeing about 80 millivolts of peak-to-peak -peak noise on that supply. Where we don't have the offset, we're actually seeing nearly 25% more, over 100 millivolts of peak-to-peak -peak ripple on that supply. So what happens then is by not using offset and being able to zoom in on the probe, we don't have enough sensitivity. We're not using the full dynamic range of the input to the A to D. And the punchline is, is that as a user, you could be throwing away margin then if you're not making use of probe offset when you're making measurements on power rails. Remember the third feature that we talked about that users told us was important in a power rail measurement tool was low loading. Now when we talk about loading, this is a pretty typical thing in oscilloscopes. When you hook up the oscilloscope and it's probed to your circuit, they've become intimate. It's an electrical contact and it's now a part of your circuit. And it's going to change the way your circuit behaves. 
There's no way around that. We just want it to change its behavior as little as possible, and that's called load loading. So a very common uh, tool that users have, were using that approached us was they were making their power, measure, power rail measurements going into 50 ohms. Remember we talked about that being the nice slow loading path. And in some cases they had enough offset range that they could zoom in on the top of the waveform like we are showing you in the previous example. But in this particular case what happens is that 50 ohm DC load on their supply is just too extreme for their targets. They tell me that that can be as much current draw as maybe their microcontroller is using or in cases where they have a power management IC, the PMIC actually goes off into other states because it thinks things are, other things are happening in the system. So when we designed the N7028 PowerRail probe, we gave it a 50K ohm DC input impedance to minimize the loading. Now in this quick little demo, what I've got here is I've got a 3.3 volt supply and I've taken and right at the probe point, I put in a sensor resistor and I'm making use of our N2820 high sensitivity current probe and so I'm going to measure the current that is being synced into the scope. This is the, the load of the probe if you probed with 50 ohms. So when I plug on the cable, I've set it so it'll trigger on me plugging in the 50 ohms. When we see the voltage go live, we'll trigger the scope and you'll see the current spike that happens too, the loading that's going to happen on the target. So from this, it's pretty obvious that what happens then is when I take and I put 50 ohm DC load onto the 3.3 volt supply, I'm sinking 66 milliamps of current into the scope. That's just too extreme for a lot of applications. So maybe a better choice than just going straight into 50 ohms would be to use the N7020A power rail probe. So to close things out, we're going to talk about bandwidth. Remember that I said the fourth thing that users were asking us for was a high bandwidth solution. It turns out that in the high-speed data systems that we have today, our high-speed digital systems, is that the clock and the data are highly susceptible to noise riding on the supply. I said earlier that the noise on the supply can be the number one cause of clock and data jitter in the system. And so the bandwidth that people need to actually track these things down is happening at the switching currents in their systems. They want very, very high bandwidth to be able to capture these, these transients. So what I've got here is it's actually a uh, supply, a 1.5 volt supply, and I'm double probing it. I'm probing it with the N7020A power rail probe, and then I'm also probing it with, with a very, very popular one-to-one -one passive probe that goes into the 1 mega ohm input. Now I chose that 1 mega ohm input and one-to-one -one passive probe because I've encountered many, many users who like that probe and they use it for their for looking at their power integrity solutions. What I wanted to point out here was two things. First, that you're going to miss the high frequency transients that are causing the issues. And second, and this is extra credit at the end there and everything, I'm going to show you how extra noise couples into that one mega ohm path. So, if you look at the scope here, I'm going to stop it for a second, and you can see these, these spikes and these transients that are showing up on channel one. That's the N7020A power rail probe. That's the higher bandwidth probe. It's capturing these transients that clearly are missing from the 20 megahertz path. It seems obvious when you think about it that the lower bandwidth probe is going to be is going to filter out those transients. As I understand it, what happens is as the supply drops on things like that, is it changes the propagation delay through gates in the devices, and that can start creating timing errors that ultimately can even lead to bit failures. So those are the kind of things that users are trying to track down in these high-speed systems. Now. For the extra credit assignment, when I was talking about the noise coupling in, watch as I raise up the trigger level on channel 2, and I go up here a little bit higher to start capturing some of these transients. Now these aren't real transients. What that really is, is that is noise from the outside environment coupling into the probe. The mega ohm input to a scope and mega ohm high impedance probes make a great antenna. They're going to pick up all sorts of magnetic coupling. So the switchers that are in your system, they're going to couple into those high impedance paths. So that's another reason why not to use the high impedance path when you're looking at the power rail measurements. So in closing, let's go over what we discussed. Remember that users that came to us asking for a specialized tool for making power integrity measurements had four key things that they were looking for. First, low loading. With the N7028 power rail probe, we accomplish this by keeping the probe as a one-to-one -one attenuation probe, so we've got good signal-to-noise ratio. In addition, the scope is terminated in the 50 ohm input of the scope. And you recall our demonstration where that is the lower noise input to the scope. 
Second, these users were asking for support for the popular supply voltages that they're going to encounter within their systems. The N7028 power rail probe has plus minus 24 volts of probe offset, so you can zoom in on the top of that DC supply and see all those AC signals that you're looking for. Third, users wanted low loading. We accomplished that with this probe by, by having a 50k ohm DC input impedance. Remember the example I showed you with the going into 50 ohms and the, the excessive loading and everything? This probe gets around that by having 50k ohms of DC. And finally, high bandwidth so that people can track down those troublesome and bothersome high frequency noise and jitter that can disturb their clock and their data. During the examples that I showed you today, we're using the Keysight S-Series 10-bit high, defi high definition oscilloscope. That would be the tool of choice, or you could also use our InfiniVision X-Series scopes, which are also compatible with the N7028 Power Rail Pro. I want to thank you for taking the time, and if you want to learn more about this product, please just go to keysight.com and search on N7028. Thank you very much.